And you might think, well, we give them morphine for pain, but you know, morphine does more than, than treat pain. It has other interesting features. But one important feature of, of narcotics, natural or synthetic, is that they can improve vasomotor function. That's what they do. And conversely, if you have a syndrome that has about a cardiac output issue and you're suffering pain, either because of that or for some other reason, you can bet your bottom dollar that people with chronic pain are not going to compensate anything wrong with their cardiac output very well. The point is there's a lot of interesting things. Let me mention another because I think it's so important. And that is, as cardiac output diminishes, preload becomes uh, very important because one of the ways the body compensates for dropping output is to squeeze down on venous, venous venial capacitance vessels to support the preload of the heart to keep the output up in the presence of diminished cardiac output. And <clears throat> so what happens is, as the body squeezes down, it, it sort of picks and chooses what vascular bed it wants to squeeze on. And guess which vascular bed it likes to squeeze on <laughs> to, to get a blood from a turnip, in effect. Or, um, it, tr it squeezes on the mesentery. It squeezes on the vas vessels of the, bl of the belly. <coughs> and sometimes the squeeze is quite significant, even to the point of ischemia and hypoxemia of the cells in the gut, in the gut lining cells of the, of the intestines, small and large intestines. This is in Guyton's textbook of physiology. In the, as the cardiac output diminishes further and the adrenaline and, and, and vasomotor function increases to compensate, it squeezes down so hard on the blood in the gut that there, is very, there isn't enough blood to supply enough oxygen and nutrients to the cells. And when the cells get starved of oxygen, they do one thing and they do it very quickly. They secrete a substance called vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF or VEGF for short. Vascular endothelial growth factor causes capillary leaks, which would lead to what we now know as leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome is a near manifestation of excess compensatory vascular tone in the face of cardiac output problems. As the leaky gut ensues, guess what pours in from the gut? There are, oh, there are more gut bacteria in your, in your colon than there are cells in your body, and they make very potent toxins called metabolic toxins. If they gain access to the systemic circulation, you're not going to do well. And of course, that Jeff is saying, I want more oxygen, which is not receiving, so it opens up the floodgates and in they roll. Your livers can be quickly overcome these things, then roll into the systemic, systemic circulation and do two very important things. One is they further suppress of the heart. These substances, and if you read it, textbook of medicine, textbook, it says it causes further depression of cardiac output. Yeah, they also roll into the central nervous system and begin to cause significant cognitive derangements. And you don't feel good. You feel poisoned. In fact, you are poisoned. You're poisoned by your own GI tract, driven by a compensatory mechanism, but at the base of it is a heart problem, and at the base of that is an energy problem, and the energy problem in the heart is a diastolic dysfunction problem, which you have on echocardiography. It goes on and on like this. You can trace virtually every single significant symptom of this disease all the way back to diastolic dysfunction and from there all the way back to the cell and from there all the way back to energy. It is an energy problem and I dare anyone to disagree with that. I'm about to show you the proof we have of it. It is an energy problem and that's going to give you diastolic dysfunction. From there, things can get dicey. How do you compensate? How well do you compensate? But if you have a pain syndrome, you're going to be have taken away from you one of the important ingredients to compensate for low output, especially over time. And I've often thought that the, <coughs> the patients that I really felt the sorriest for, for and also the ones that I think are at greatest risk for, risk for suicide are the ones who have this disease with significant and unabated pain. And doctors refusing to treat the pain on top of all that. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you have this syndrome, you have pain because you can't have this syndrome, at least by case definition, 
without any pain. The triad or drum roll of this disease, um, when I first saw hundreds of patients and they formed support groups, Carol can contest, can, I, th I think can agree with this, they would sort of sit around tables and they start talking to each other. And they would, they would, well, I've got this, and I've got that, oh, yeah, I've got this. And they kind of, after about five or ten minutes of this group around the table, they would, you could feel the energy rise as if they all said yes. And pretty soon they all began to feel that, you know, I don't know what this thing is, but we all around this table have it. And if you stuck an MS patient in the group, they'd listen to all this, and they'd say, you know, I don't, I don't know what these people have, but I don't have it. And they'd get up and walk away. If you stuck a lupus patient in the head, I don't, I don't, this doesn't sound like me, to walk away. But the Cephas patients, within a matter, I would say a matter of five or ten minutes of speaking around the table, like a round table, they know in their hearts that they have this. Whatever it is, they feel, they're, they're hearing something. This is, I don't think this is an energetic thing. Well, it might be. Who knows? Um, exactly. But what I think they're hearing is the drum roll. And this is the drum roll. I don't have enough energy to function. My brain isn't working right, and I hurt. And that's the drum roll. And if you had to see if this is complicated, but if this is what you're hearing, I have not enough energy to work. Uh, my, um, my brain isn't working. Something wrong with it. I think I'm getting old. I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. I'm not functioning right. I get lost in traffic. I, all the things that you and all, I'm sure, are well aware of. And you know what? I'm hurt. I hurt my muscles. I hurt, I hurt all over. I said, well, where do you hurt? Everything hurts. My bones hurt. Everything hurts. <clears throat> and all, besides all of that, I just don't feel good. I feel as if someone's poison. I have people talk about this, this thing that they call the dreadful feeling. They call it. They can't even describe this exactly. It's not exactly malaise. It's almost like they're, they're poisoned. I have a lady from Texas, actually, and I, I think I always remember her, and she said, Dr. I don't know what this is. I tried to put words in her mouth. She said, no, that it's just my dreadful feeling. 